Hey, what is up guys? This is Floyd with Floyd's Tech Reviews, coming back to you with another video. And uh, today, I'm actually building another PC, but this PC isn't meant for me. This one's for my dad. So the whole idea behind this build is um, he wants to be able to make um, to make beats. So it's audio producing, pretty much. My dad is actually the guy that uh, makes the beats for my YouTube videos. So if you liked any of the beats that are in the background of any of my other videos, or maybe even in this video, um, he's the guy that um, that makes all that stuff for me. So without further ado, let's get into the parts list. So in this build, we uh, I chose the B550 motherboard. Um, not nothing too fancy. Uh, this one was actually ran me about $100, so it saved a few dollars. Um, this RAM actually isn't the one that I'm using. It's a, um, it's a low profile RAM that's in here. It's LPX, uh, 16 gigabytes, uh, 3600 uh, megahertz. Uh, I got a P5 uh, three, Gen 3 M.2 SSD. Uh, we got the Ryzen 5 5600X. And for the GPU, we we're using the same um, the GPU that was in my uh, old build, which is the RX 480. We know the graphics cards um, are you know hard to get right now. And I just upgraded my uh, graphics card on my PC, so I was hooking them up with this one. He doesn't really need a graphics card, um, but I figured, you know, why not? Um, so we have the Hyper 212 RGB uh, for the CPU cooler. And we got a 650 watt uh, power supply. And for the case, he wanted something that had RGB. Pretty much, I told him to use the same case that I was using because it's something I'm familiar with. Super easy to build off of. And that's going to be oh, the Corsair 4000X RGB. So it's pretty much the same case that I have but um, it has a glass front panel and uh, it comes with RGB fans included. All right, but with all that, you got the parts list. Um, total, this is about $1,100. And uh, let's get to building. All right, so we're basically gonna start clearing off this table and just get the stuff that we need. All right, there we go. The first thing you do, you need your CPU install your CPU into your motherboard. And with our pin up, install the CPU and let the lever down. And just like that, our CPU is installed. Next, we're gonna be using our CPU cooler, the Cooler Master uh, Hyper 212 RGB Black Edition. All right, so basically you want to take this bracket here and you want to put it under like so. And then you grab one of these screws, the smaller ones, and put it through the top. You put that through the top, this through the bottom, and then you screw it together. Obviously with the, with the screws facing up or towards the motherboard. So this is gonna go down on the CPU, if you didn't know. And you're just gonna screw it on, just like that. Do that on both sides. All right, so once you got everything on the block installed, you got this little piece here. So on one side, it says Intel, as you can see there. On the other side, it says AMD. So you're gonna be installing the little pegs into here. And by pegs, this is what I mean. These little pieces right here. I'm gonna be installing these on the AMD side. So this side is AMD. You put these in this groove. Obviously it's not gonna go all the way through because I'm on the bench. But yeah, just like that. And you wanna keep these spread apart as far away from each other. So you're gonna do that on all four sides. And then you're gonna install a plastic piece over the corner. All right, so this is how it should look once you're finished. So on the AMD side, well, this is the side that you were installing the little things on, right? Where you're gonna flip it over on this side. And uh, there's two notches on each one. Um, so the easiest way to, um, to guide them up use the side that's closest to the Intel mount. So you have, there's four Intel mounts, right? So this one's closest to this side, 
This one's closest to this one. This one's closest to that one. And this one's closest to that one. And then this is gonna go on the back of your motherboard. So before, before you can put this into your motherboard, you need to take out the screws from the other mount before you can uh, take it out. So that's what I'm gonna do now. All right, so once you remove these mounts, you can lift up your motherboard and this uh, stock back tray is coming out. You just move this over. And then you're gonna set this down. And I'm gonna put it over a little bit. And you just wanna set your motherboard in the screw slot. Or pretty much just like that. If you don't have the uh, mount in the back in the right spot, in the right position, like I showed you earlier, obviously it won't fit through these holes. But mine fits, so there we go. It fits through the holes real good. Then you're gonna need uh, these bits here. And you're gonna screw these down onto these little mounts. So now that's what I'm gonna do in all four corners. All right, so now with all the four mounts installed, it's time for business. All right, so with the Cooler Master Cooler, uh, you have to take the fan off. With the one that I have, I thought that it screwed on like a normal case fan, um, but obviously you can see that it's not gonna work. So the way that this one goes on, it pushes on like this. So to take it off, you just gotta pull it. Nothing too crazy. And make sure to take off this little label here before you uh, try to install it. <clears throat> I'm gonna use this thermal paste because I already opened it, but it does come with its own thermal paste. So you don't need to go out and buy your own thermal paste. Oh, and also I didn't show you this, but uh, it comes with this little adapter. You just put this on there and then you screw that down with your screwdriver to torque it down. But that aside, it's game time. So you wanna put a pea-sized amount. This has little notches in here on the little thermal paste itself so you can tell when to stop. That's about good right now. Now you wanna take the radiator without the fan and with your little thing taken off. And you wanna to try to guide it up here as best as you can in all four corners. And then you wanna tighten it down in opposite corners with a long screwdriver, one side at a time. So if you have this motherboard um, you're going to put the fan on the CPU fan and you can put the uh, RGB lights on any uh, RGB pin. You can put it over here on this motherboard, LED CPU. But this is what we're looking like so far. Don't have the RAM installed or anything, just the CPU and the CPU cooler. All right, so we probably did the hardest thing which was install the CPU cooler. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna install the RAM. Um, you're gonna do it in the second and the fourth to run it in dual channel. And you're just gonna have to pull these pins right here down. And then position your RAM in the right position. So the RAM has uh, notches in it and the motherboard also has notches in it. So uh, there is a right and a wrong way of putting RAM in. Now once it's screwed in, you just want to push it down until it snaps on both sides, just like that. And now we 
have our RAM installed. We have our M.2 SSD. We run the Crucial P5, a thousand gigabytes, AKA a terabyte. This is what our M.2 SSD looks like. And it's gonna go right here in this slot. So this came pre-installed um, with the, oh, it has a dual M.2. So there's M.2 here and M.2 there. But it, this one comes installed. Most motherboards uh, come with them not installed. Um, the little bracket here, but this one comes with it. So you're gonna take your screwdriver and unscrew here. And then you're gonna in, insert your M.2. Right now. and then put that screw right back. That's why I recommend having magnetic screwdriver bits because it comes in handy. And boom, just like that, you now have a terabyte of storage. So this is pretty much all you can do outside of the um, case. So now we're gonna go ahead and install it in the case. Actually, before we install it in the case, um, I want to install the graphics card just so I can test out the parts. So I'm gonna connect the power supply, the 24 pin and the CPU and install the GPU for the, uh, just to run the screen and our, uh, we're gonna set up like a kind of like a touch test bench just so if something's defective if the motherboard is defective or if anything else is defective we can go ahead and figure out what it is before we throw everything in the case and then have to figure it out that way so i'm gonna show you how to do that right quick and uh we're gonna test everything out all right so basically install the graphics card pull this pin back it's already pulled back and just because I'm setting up the test the test bench, this isn't gonna, this isn't how it's gonna be. But I'm gonna install this here, push it down, install it, and we just need to provide power to everything. So here's our power. So this power supply is semi-modular, and it's basically semi-modular because. It gives you the two important cables that you need that every PC pretty much needs. And that is your 24 pin and your CPU pin. And the others are optional. So your peripheral SATA cables or your uh, PCIe, those are all optional and they come separated. So they're in this bag and you can plug it up and if you need it. So this pretty much helps with cable management and not having a bunch of cables that you don't need. All right, so we're gonna plug in the 24 pin. Plug that in here. There we go. Just need to plug this into the wall. So you want to use the PCIe, and this is a six pin. I'm gonna plug this in directly into the power supply, which is PCIe. Let's see. and plug this in into the GPU. Now you need to run this into the wall, obviously. And then after that, I just need the HDMI port and plug it in and we should be good to go. Okay, so once you're here, 
you have everything plugged in. You got your power to the GPU, GPU to the display. Um, you got a 24 pin in your CPU power. Uh, you're gonna have to start the system, but how do you start the system, you might ask? Well, you have to find where your front panel uh, power is. Uh, let me see if I can turn my flashlight on. You see it there? It says uh, PW plus minus, and it has the reset button under it. So you wanna press those two pins with a screwdriver, and that should turn your system on. So these two pins here, and your CPU fan should spin, your power supply, and maybe even your graphics card. Maybe not, there we go. And it should display on your monitor here. I don't have anything installed on the boot drive, uh, reboot and select proper boot device. And I don't have any, anything, um, like any peripherals to control the system, but it's getting pretty late. Um, it's almost midnight and I gotta go to work tomorrow. So I'm gonna leave everything the way that it is now and resume the video tomorrow. All right, y'all, so it's the next day. Um, just got off of work. I got my uh, Windows 10 installed on this flash drive. So I'm gonna be inserting that into the motherboard. And now uh, we can get power to this thing. All right, so maybe I don't have Windows 10 installed because <laughs> it's not fun in the operating system. I may have uh, deleted it once I uh, created it with my old system. This is the same uh, driver that I use on my old system. So I think I may have deleted it. So you're in luck because I get to show you how to install this uh, Windows 10 onto this driver. It's pretty simple and straightforward. So go ahead and power this off and then follow me to the desktop, shall we? All right, so once you got your USB drive plugged in, you have to make sure your uh, flash drive is at least eight gigabytes. So you're gonna go to Windows 10 download, uh, click on the first link up top, and then download tool now. And then you wanna go in here, uh, show in folder, you wanna right click, uh, cut, and paste inside of your flash drive. All right, so once you moved it to your USB, you're gonna double click and open up the file. Uh, hit yes. I'm gonna accept the terms and conditions. All right, so and since we're putting this on a USB flash drive, we're gonna uh, press create installation media. A USB flash drive. Here's the drive that we're installing it on. And just like that, our flash drive is ready. So then you take that flash drive and plug it into your test bench. All right, y'all. So I moved my test bench to my gaming desk, but just on the other side. I have a blank monitor and I have a keyboard and a mouse set up here. So all you have to do is connect your flash drive that you just installed Windows 10 on and install that into your motherboard and uh, hit the switch for, on your power supply and grab yourself a screwdriver. Oh, I'm stupid. I never plugged it into the wall. Give me one second. <laughs> All right, take two. See, now we got power <laughs> to the motherboard. With the power of the system on, 34th pin, second row, or top row. We got power. And we should get a, something on the display. Ah, nothing's going right, seems like. 
just the power button. The screen usually turns on on its own. But today of all days, can't seem to figure it out. All right, we up finally. So I didn't have my monitor plugged in. <laughs> I haven't did anything on this side of the desk in a while, so it's probably why I'm having such a hard time. <laughs> but all right, so we got our windows up. Um, so got English, English, US, yes, okay, next. And we're gonna install Windows. Uh, we don't have a Windows key right now. So we're just gonna do Windows 10 Home. And then next. Except next. So this is the M.2 SSD that I have installed, and this is gonna be my boot drive. So whatever drive that you want, that's the drive that you're gonna select here. I only have one in here, so this is my only option. And then just let it do its thing. And once that's done, everything should be ready to go. It's gonna take a little while, so I'm gonna cut it right here. All right, guys, so another thing you need to do is install your BIOS while you're on the test bench. So to install your BIOS, you need to have your flash drive handy. And uh, I recommend you just type in what motherboard you have on Google. So I have a Gigabyte B550 D3 uh, DS3H. I'm gonna click there. So if you have this motherboard, this uh, this is gonna help you. Uh, it's more than likely gonna be the top link here. And you should be on the Gigabyte website. And um, what you're gonna go, what you're gonna need to go to is uh, support right here. And then, um, let's see, you're gonna scroll down and it says BIOS down here. I'm gonna click on that and expand that. And I recommend you install the latest uh, version of the BIOS. So they have the date here, and this is the latest one, uh, F14E at the time of this recording. And it'll give you like a brief description of uh, each one. So if you want it to run Windows 11, you have to install this version of the BIOS. Um, you're just gonna download it. And once you download it to your to your flash drive after you download it to your flash drive you're gonna restart your system and then keep pressing F2 uh, after the system restarts and it'll take you straight to your BIOS after you're in your BIOS for this motherboard it'll have a tab for you to upgrade your BIOS uh, with the system on each motherboard is different some require your system to be off um, so you have to just look up your motherboard on uh, YouTube if you don't have this motherboard and uh, figure out which way it is to upgrade your BIOS. I would show you everything in the BIOS, but I don't have the system anymore, so I can't show you step by step. I just noticed it during uh, my editing session. But if there were any problems uh, with your system, whether uh, this didn't come up or you kept getting boot loops or something like that, that's when you start to kind of dive deeper into what's going on with your system. Um, but everything seems to be working fine. So what we're gonna do next is unbox the case and uh, throw this motherboard in there. All right, so once your case is unboxed, what you're gonna wanna do is flip it around and uh, I'm gonna take this back panel off first. 
You got two screws. You got one on top, one on bottom. Pull it. And your panel comes off. So with the Corsair 4000X, it comes with a RGB controller for the front three fans. Uh, and you can add three more fans, uh, two on the top and one in the back uh, for the RGB controller. Um, here's your hard drive cage. It also has your instructions and extra hardware. So you're gonna take that out, safety information, all that stuff. And with this build, we're not gonna be using uh, hard drives. So really the whole hard drive cage can come out. Your hardware is gonna be in this uh, brown box here, cardboard box. But to take the hard drive uh, cage out, it's just two screws that, um, that hold it in. It's kind of tight. Yeah, one here, one in the back. But yeah, hold a uh, hard drive cage comes out. If you have hard drives, obviously keep it in there. This is on top of this, so that's why it was so hard coming out. But there you go. So now you've got a lot of room, a little basement, if you will, for cable management and all of that. So your power supply is gonna come here. And you got these wires here that are already pre-cable uh, managed for you, so that's pretty nice. And, uh, and with the semi-modular power supply, uh, the only thing you have is your CPU uh, power cable. It can go up here. And your 24 pin is gonna go this way. And whatever other uh, connectors that you need, you can uh, plug them in. And whatever you don't need, you can leave it out of your system completely. Uh, so that's pretty nice. So with that being said, we're gonna go ahead and take the other side panel off and we're gonna install the motherboard into the case. But before you install the motherboard into the case, you need to install your IO shield, which is, so it comes with your motherboard. It's this uh, little shield here. It basically has all the label instructions on here, uh, like USB, HDMI, and all that type of stuff. Take this case, spin it around this way. And this, this uh, side panel, tempered glass panel, comes off the same way as the back side. There's two little screws. There's like a little tab here on the top and bottom. You pull it out and then you slide it this way. It comes out just like that. So I'm gonna put this tempered glass somewhere that doesn't break. And now everything inside of here is good. So you take your IO shield here that comes with your motherboard and you install it into the back of your case. And just like that, the IO shield is installed. And then we're gonna set the case down on its back. And we're gonna install the motherboard. Okay, so I had to move the camera angle. So the IO shield is already installed right here. So now we're just gonna take our motherboard and kind of angle it in this way. You wanna line up the IO shield. And there's gonna be, uh, there's mounting screws for this motherboard. You can see one here, one here, one here, one there, one there, one here. And you got two more here, one, two. So line up the IO shield first. Just like that. And then you try to find the middle point. And just like that. So your case comes with uh, its own screws for your motherboard is going to be in this box and these are the three different types of screws so the ones that you're going to use to se to secure the motherboard are going to be these ones and they have a rounded head so this is what the screws are going to look like so you take these screws and you screw in your motherboard
All right, so now it's power supply time. So before you install your power supply, um, check to see if there's any plastics anywhere. And I do have plastic on, on here, on the Corsair logo. We'll go ahead and take that off. And when you install your power supply, you want the fan to be on the bottom. It's gonna take in air from the bottom and push it out the, the back. It's gonna push it out here. So take out any of your extra cables. And then you're gonna install it this way. Then you're gonna go back to your case hardware. And now you're gonna use these teeny tiny screws with the flat head. And these are the screws you'll be using. and you'll be installing them on this side of your power supply. All right, so once you secure your power supply, you're gonna take the cable that says CPU, and you're gonna feed it through the top right hole. And then you're gonna take your 24 pin, and you're gonna bring it through on this side. This little cutout, and that connects directly to your motherboard. Now we're gonna spin it around again. It's gonna be a lot of spinning. I need like a platform that spins, it would be a little bit easier. All right, so you take your 24 pin, and connect your 24 pin here. Then you take your CPU power and you plug it in to your uh, eight pin here on the top left. I showed you this earlier on the test bench. And boom, just like that, your power supply is connected. I'll flip it back around. And now you can run all of your case cables. So you have your fan connectors here. You have your, you have your SATA for your uh, RGB controller. You got your audio connector. Um, you got all of your front panels, your power, uh, power button reset, all those buttons. <laughs> and then you have your USB. Uh, 3.2. So you're gonna plug all of these up to your motherboard now. All right, so we got a power switch, a reset switch, power LED, uh, negative, and plus. And all of these have uh, labels underneath. So it'll show you. All right, you guys, so I ran into a slight little problem. So this fan comes with three RGB fans on the front and here's the fan uh, RGB controller. Um, this motherboard only supports two system fans. So obviously with it being three system fans, I can't plug them into the motherboard, which is fine. Uh, what I'll have to do is run like an extension. So I have, um, or like a hub rather, hub rather, um, so I will plug one hub into the USB, I mean, to the uh, motherboard's header, and that one piece will turn into four fan controllers. So that's enough for these three front fans, and I want to add one more case fan for the exhaust. But if he wanted to run the two top fans, I would have to buy two of those system uh, hub controllers, and um, which will work out perfectly because I can run four from the front and then four on the back. Uh, so I can run these three and then I can run the three on the front and I'll have two left over. So that's the only thing that's holding me up at this point. Um, so once I start the system, only two of these uh, case fans will work right now as far as spinning. Um, all of the RGB should turn on because they're all plugged in here. And uh, I don't have an exhaust fan as of now. So I'm about to boot it up for the first time and uh, see how that goes. All right, guys, so it's two days later. My package just came in from Amazon. 
And this is uh, this is what a fan hub looks like. So you got fan one through four, and it uses uh, one pin to run four fans. So this motherboard, it uh, supports two fan, it has two fan headers. So I can use two of these and it will um, support up to eight fans, but this case only supports up to six fans, so it's perfect. So what you're gonna wanna do is uh, plug this into one of the fan headers and then uh, it comes with a 3M adhesive. You're gonna slap this on in the back and then plug up uh, three of your fans and uh, it should run all three fans off of the same fan header. So I'm gonna do that right now. All right, y'all, so I got the three fans plugged up here. So after I power it on, all three fans should spin now. And we got all three fans spinning. Now I just need to wait for three more fans uh, for the top. So I got, I'm gonna be installing two exhaust fans on top and one exhaust in the rear. And once those come in, I will be installing the second one so uh, it can control these three fans off of the second header that's on this motherboard. Uh, so these obviously they don't control RGB. Um, so these uh, this case came with an RGB header so you don't have to worry about that. I'll be leaving links for these down in the description uh, so that you guys could um, make it easier for you to find you know what I use in this video. So I hope it helps if you run into this problem. All right guys, so I ran out of time uh, in making this video. This uh, this week was a pretty busy week for me, so I wasn't able to, uh, to document me installing the fans, but it's not really that big of a deal. I, I feel like most people will, um, will, they'll know what to do. It's just four screws for each fan. Um, but yeah, this is the build. Everything turns out pretty good. Uh, so if you made it this far in the video, I really appreciate you uh, for sticking around and watching this long video. I know it's uh, longer than any other one that I've made, but I just wanted to kind of show the process. So um, if you're new, uh, subscribe to my channel. If you're a returning viewer, uh, thank you for your continued support, and I'll see y'all in the next one.